Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is the wave nature of light. And we want to know how does the particle model and wave model of light compare to one another and what are the behaviors of light that support the so-called wave model. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. There is an age-old debate in science regarding the nature of light. What exactly is it? Is it a particle or is it a wave? Or is it both particle and wave? Scientists have landed upon this latter idea that light is both particle and wave. The so-called dual nature of light describes light by two seemingly opposite ideas, being a particle and being a wave. To understand the distinction between the so-called particle and wave model of light, let's consider the following bullet points. First, according to the particle model, light consists of tiny packets of energy known as photons. These photons have no mass but a finite energy, and the energy of a photon is dependent upon the frequency of light and not upon the number of photons. Rather, the number of photons determines the so-called intensity of light. In contrast, the wave model of light suggests that light propagates through space as a wave with a fluctuating electric and magnetic field. Such an electromagnetic wave has a varying wavelength and frequency and exhibits classic wave behaviors such as interference and diffraction. The fundamental idea of wave-particle duality is that you can look at light and at times observe it behaving as a particle, and at other times you can observe light behaving as a wave. As the image above me indicates, you can look at the same thing, light, and in it you can observe both particle and wave. This idea of wave-particle duality is not restricted to light at all, but instead describes the whole of nature. There's considerable evidence of even an electron behaving as a particle and also behaving as a wave. So what are the behaviors of light that distinguish it from being a particle versus being a wave? The most classic particle behavior of light is the photoelectric effect. This is the effect that is observed when light strikes the surface of a metal and an electron is ejected from the surface of that metal. The actual kinetic energy of the ejected electron is dependent upon the frequency of the light. Increasing the frequency increases the kinetic energy of the ejected of electron, but increasing the number of photons that strike the surface has no effect upon the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. This is an observation that is contrary to the wave model of light and supports the particle model of light. The three behaviors of light that support the wave model are interference, diffraction, and polarization. Since this entire tutorial series is upon light waves in color, we'll be spending more time discussing these three wave behaviors. Perhaps you've seen the demonstration in which red laser light is shined up on a double slit up on a slide. The light passes through the double slit, thus forming two sources of red light, which are then projected up onto a screen within a dark room. Upon the screen, you observe a pattern of alternating dark and bright red bands. The dark points upon the screen are locations where light from the two sources have landed and destructively interfered to cancel each other out resulting in darkness, but the bright red bands up on the screen are locations where light from the two sources have landed on the screen and constructively interfered, thus producing a location of maximum brightness. An experiment like this without a laser was performed by Thomas Young in 1801 to provide evidence that light undergoes interference and thus behaves as a wave. Diffraction is a well-known wave behavior. Diffraction describes the tendency of a wave to pass through an opening or around a barrier and to fill in the region of space directly behind that barrier. This diagram illustrates the wave water waves traveling through a tank and approaching an obstacle that is in its path. The diagram shows the waves reaching the obstacle and continuing straight ahead. The region directly behind the obstacle is water that is undisturbed. But this is not what happens. What really happens when we observe water waves approaching an obstacle is we observe it bending into the region of space directly behind the obstacle. We would observe small ripples within the water behind the obstacle, indicating that water waves are undergoing diffraction. 
the tendency of a water wave to undergo diffraction depends upon the wavelength of the waves relative to the size of the obstacle, with longer wavelength waves undergoing a greater amount of diffraction. The photograph above illustrates the result of shining red laser light upon the eye of a needle. The laser light will pass through the opening of the needle and also around the edges of the eye of the needle and then undergo interference on its way to a screen. Upon the screen we see an interference pattern that results from the diffraction of light both through the eye of the needle and around the eye of the needle. These two behaviors, diffraction and interference, are characteristic of all waves and and this demonstration provides evidence that light has wave-like behaviors. Polarization is a third behavior of light that supports the wave model of light. A Polaroid filter is a manufactured material in which all or at least most of the molecules are aligned in the same direction. We can think of vibrations of light that are in the same direction as the molecules as being absorbed by the filter while vibrations that are perpendicular to the molecules will pass through the filter. In a simplified model we can think of as light as having half of its vibrations going vertically and half of its vibrations going horizontally. As such light approaches a filter with the molecules aligned horizontally, the horizontal vibrations are absorbed by the filter and the vertical vibrations pass through the filter. We would observe that the emerging light from the filter is, has one half the intensity as the original intensity and is vibrating in a single direction. If you were to take two Polaroid filters and align them such that their molecules were perpendicular to one another, then you would observe that the first filter would, ab would absorb one half of the light and the second filter would absorb the second half of the light and no light would get through both filters. In addition to interference, diffraction, and polarization, there are other behaviors of light, such as reflection at surfaces, refraction at boundaries, and the Doppler shifting of frequencies that follow the patterns observed of other waves. Furthermore, light has measurable wavelengths and frequencies. These are properties of waves that are not typically associated with particles. A matter of fact, the wide range of frequencies of electromagnetic waves are typically organized into an electromagnetic spectrum, something that you've likely encountered in other science classes. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. We have a wonderful interactive infographic that is surely to amaze. We have a science reasoning activity, and finally the tutorial page for brushing up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.